Chapter 10 is about energy. Chapter 11 is about using energy. And so we're concerned with real world applications of energy concepts. For instance, if you eat a slice of pizza, how much energy expenditure can you have? How many times can you raise a 30 kilogram bar? That is a question dealing with efficiency and the efficiency of the human body we're told is about 25%. And efficiency is always defined as what you get divided by what you had to pay. That's the way we generally define it. Now, for some things like walking, what you get is difficult to quantify. And so we have to solve those problems differently. But in this case, what you get, well, it's pretty clear what you get. You raise the bar. You change is gravitational potential energy. What you had to pay is the kilojoules in the pizza. How much energy did you get from the pizza? So that's fundamentally what we're looking for. You get a certain number of kilojoules. How much change in potential energy can you buy? That's what the question is asking. So let's go ahead and set this problem up. Okay, let's do a, our prepare step. And to prepare, we need to do a couple of pieces of background work. First off, how much energy is in a slice of pizza? Well, this is something you can look up in the book, there's a table, and the energy in a slice of pizza is given as 1,260 kilojoules, or 1.26 times 10 to the sixth joules. Now that would be a pretty big, pretty thick slice of pizza, but there's the amount of energy in one slice of pizza. What are we gonna take as delta UG? Okay, because you take the bar and you raise it, and then you lower it back down again. We're only gonna consider the raising because in principle, you could raise it, and then you could just drop it, and then you could raise it, and you could drop it. You don't actually have to have any, any ex energy expenditure for the bar on the way back down. But in fact, even if you lower it, the energy expenditure for the lowering is significantly less than the energy expenditure for the raising. So the change in potential energy of the bar is just going to be the mass of the bar, which is 30 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the amount that the bar is raised, which is 0 0.60 meters, times the number of repetitions. This is the energy per repetition, times n repetitions. That's the total change in potential energy which this energy expenditure buys you. And now, we're ready to solve. And the solution is just this is to say the ratio of these two values is just equal to 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 is equal to what you get, which is n times 30 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.60 meters. That's what you get divided by what you had to pay. What you pay is the energy in that slice of pizza, 1.26 times 10 to the sixth joules. The only thing I don't know in this relationship is n, and if we solve for it, what I get to two significant figures is 1,800, 1,800 repetitions in order to burn off the energy in that slice of pizza. Now, that might seem surprising, but I think what, what, you're, what you're thinking is it's actually seeming depressing. You're trying to work off this pizza. You've got to do a lot of reps of this bar. You're never going to do this many reps. But really, it's not that surprising. It's only 30 kilograms. That's not that much mass. And you're raising it only 0.6 meters every time. So ultimately, you're taking that 30 kilogram mass and you're raising it by a distance of about 1,000 meters. And so the energy for that, m times g times h, 30 times g, we'll call it 10 times h, which is 1,000, is about one quarter of the energy in the slice of pizza. So the net result is our answer seems surprising if depressing, if your goal is to exercise to work off the food that you've eaten. Okay, so our net result is this does in fact match with our understanding of how the world works.